Hey guys, Jacob from Trucks and Toys. Just gonna talk you through a quick install video on how to install the billet, billet fuel locking door on your ramp. So first thing you need is a ramp. So if you haven't got one, give us a call. Um, second thing you need is a billet fuel locking door. So it comes in a packet like this. What you do is open it up, check it out, make sure there's no damage, all the parts are there. So need a set of keys with it, which is on top of the packet and an install kit, which is all your nuts and screws and bolts. Now, some of this won't get used on the install. Tools you'll need, a set of Torx bits to undo the original door paint scraper which I'll show you the trick to get the fuel locking door off the old one an imperial spanner which is 1132 and I recommend an impact gun just to make it a bit quicker so what I'll do I'll show you to get the old one off and then we'll talk about installing the new one we'll just talk about how to get the original fuel door off so what you want to do is take your T25 torque spits remove the three black T25s around the fuel filler now put them to the side we have to reinstall them once we get the original door off Get the T30 Torx bits and undo these two larger Torx. These two can be thrown away or stored aside. We don't reuse those. Next step is you want to get your paint scraper. Recommend a paint scraper or some sort of flat device to get underneath. Even a ruler does it. So just underneath, you'll see, which you can't see, but on the inside, there's a, it's a plastic insert with some foam type glue. So what you want to do is come from underneath, slide up through, just break the foam glue and then I'll show you how to get it out. So what you want to do is get a paint scraper or the ruler. Just slide up just under that. You have to put a, quite a bit of pressure. You just want to break that glue. So that'll allow the fuel flap to slide to the side and be taken out. Now what you want to do, once that glue has been broken off on the inside, I recommend undoing the AdBlue filler just to give it a bit more access to slide out. Now that'll move around. What you want to do is just twist it up. The glue might still have a bit of attachment there. Just twist it up, move it around and sort of jiggle it to the, the glue breaks. And then all you do is just twist it to the side. It takes a little bit of jiggling sometimes to get out. Take it out and that's it. Next step is you want to put the add blue back in so you don't drop any screws or anything in there. Now the three Torx T25s, you want to replace these back in the fuel door just to hold it firmly. Tighten them up. Next step, get the keys for the billet fuel locking door. Open the door up. Now what we want to do is go check the location of the mounting points. So on the back you'll see there's four screws. In the fitting kit comes with two stainless studs. Now what we want to do is go over to the door and you want to try the first two holes. Slides through the original mounting points. Now, as you can see, the two original holes pushes it too far to the rear of the car. So what we do is just try the next two mounting holes. As you can see, it sits perfectly in the center. So not all RAM is the same, so you might have to try either one. Now, the next step is now we know the mounting location. I recommend putting a bit of Loctite on here, screwing them in. You'll need a set of Allen keys to tighten them up, firm in, firm into the, to the billet fuel locking door, and then we'll talk about how to mount it. Next step, once these two locating studs are Loctited in, we move on to putting it into the car. Now, you also see there is two adjusting screws on the back of the fuel door. Those adjusting screws allow, once you tighten it up, to either adjust it out this way, or adjust it out slightly that way. Most of the time, they don't need adjusting. Once they're in, what we'll do is move on to the, the putting the nuts on. So it comes with four stainless nuts and four lock washers. Now, I do recommend putting some Loctite on the studs, even though they do have lock washers, just to make sure that it never comes loose or comes off. So one star lock washer. So what you do is just slide it in there. It's a little bit tricky, a little bit fiddly. Slide it all the way back. And then, now, I recommend doing these up just finger tight till you get both on. You can remove the add blue one just to get a bit more room in there. Second lock washer and nut. Then just get the 1132 spanner. Now I'm using a ratchet spanner. You can just use a normal spanner ratchet, just makes it a little bit easier. What you want to do is slide it in there. Now, on the nut. It is a little bit fiddly. And I just use my fingers to move it up and down. 
Now these studs don't need to be crazy tight, they just need to be firm and enough that they won't come loose. So that's on there nice and tight. And as you can see, it is pretty firm to get, so. I do recommend it does come with four, just putting a second set on just to secure it. Doesn't have to go on there, but it's just a recommendation. So once they're tight, it's all done. So just close it, make sure the operation works. All good. Now, if you do find it's a little bit loose on the door, you can just bend this tab here, which puts a little bit of pressure on it as well. So in there with a pair of motor grips or vice grips, just bend it slightly to put a little bit more pressure. Other than that, it's all good to go. So.